Hello, my name is Rob Keim and I'm a member of the worship team here. Welcome to Pierce Church's online worship experience. We're so happy that you've chosen to join us in worship today. Feel free to connect with us on Facebook throughout the week for a time of sharing the word, for a time of prayer, and for opportunities to worship together. And for more information about other things that are going on each week, and to access giving options, visit our website at piercechurch.org. Jesse Kime and I am on staff here at Pierce Church. It's a strange feeling to be in this space alone. It is typically full of people gathered to worship the Lord and connect with each other. It's hard to believe how fast everything changed. But this has reminded us all that this place is just a building. We are the church. So thank you for being a part of what God is doing at Pierce Church. We may be apart, but we're never alone. So I'd like to welcome you today to our worship experience. We have online hosts to help you feel connected with us and to welcome you here today. Feel free to use our comment section and share your thoughts and your praises and your feelings today with us. Now let us worship our God together.
from Peter, apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's chosen people who live as refugees scattered throughout the provinces. Let us give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of his great mercy, he gave us new life by raising Jesus from the dead. This fills us with a living hope so that we look forward to possessing the rich blessings that God keeps for his people. He keeps them for you in heaven where they cannot decay or spoil or fade away. Wow, with those powerful and inspiring words, the apostle Peter begins his first letter. There's 1 Peter and, yeah, you got it, 2 Peter. And we're gonna take the next seven weeks here at Pierce Church and through our online services, we're gonna study section by section, seven lessons through the letter of 1 Peter. And the way we're gonna do it is, <clears throat> I'll be teaching on it on Sunday morning, and then we're gonna give you opportunity, either on your own or with your small group, or with your family, or we'll start a group just for you. Um, and we're gonna use Right Now Media. It's a free resource of Christian discipleship material that's really world class. And so if you'll let us know, you can go onto our website, piercechurch.org, click on the community tab, you'll see Right Now Media, follow the links, and uh, you'll be signed up for free with us. And then over the next seven weeks, we'll learn about a living hope through Jesus Christ. And it's our prayer that during these weeks, hope rises in our hearts. This whole coronavirus thing is no fun, now is it? I mean, we're working from home because we don't want to risk infecting our coworkers. Our kids are learning online because it's not quite safe to go back to the classroom. Sports fans everywhere are stressed out because every major league is on hiatus. Finally, gas is cheap and we don't have anywhere to go. And of course, on top of all that, we are just one of hundreds of thousands of churches around the world who have temporarily closed our buildings and are meeting online. The church is enclosed. It's deployed. But our buildings aren't being used right now. Who would have ever seen this happen? coming you know who would have known this might happen god did god is still in control he is the one no matter what who can bring good out of bad and grow us and teach us through tough times you know despite the difficulties we're experiencing some good things can happen we have more time at home to draw closer with our family we have more time to explore spiritual pathways like prayer and Bible study or spiritual disciplines we've often wondered about. We have increased opportunity to show love and kindness to our neighbors and friends. Here at Pierce Church, we're providing food support for families in need. Every Monday morning, we give boxes of food to provide for those who otherwise wouldn't have enough. There's just a chance to pick up the phone, you know, to tell somebody you love them, right? To fire up the internet, to use your favorite social media platform, a Zoom call, or even just to write an old school handwritten note to tell somebody you admire them or appreciate them or to offer a compliment. Wasn't it Mark Twain who said, I can live for two months on one good compliment? I think he's right. Well, one person who knew the power of a heartfelt letter and was moved by the Spirit of God to write it was the Apostle Peter. He wrote two of them, in fact, tucked away at the end of our New Testament between Hebrews and Revelation. We see this wonderful, insightful, impacting letter from God. It's fascinating that Peter, who hung out with Jesus so much, wrote relatively little. I think I know why. <laughs> Given Peter's rough and rugged fisherman backstory, his tough physicality and intense personality, I'm not really surprised. He's probably not big to take time to sit down and write a letter, unless, of course, he was moved by the Spirit of God. 
This is a Christ follower with an incredible resume. Did you know that every time the disciples are listed by name in the four Gospels, Peter's name appears first? During his three years of internship with Jesus, his life is a litany of miraculous highs and disappointing lows. He's the only disciple to attack and wound somebody with a sword. The only person other than Jesus who ever walked on water. The only one of the 12 that Jesus called Satan. The only person that the risen up Jesus told the first witnesses of the resurrection to go notify by name. Go tell the disciples and Peter that I'm alive. Peter is the only Christ follower who was lovingly restored by his master to a place of leadership in ministry. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you really love me? Oh, I know you said you didn't. And then you said you didn't. And then you said you didn't. But you're welcome back. And Peter, restating his love for Jesus, is restored by God's grace. Pretty incredible. We know that it was once fallen, now restored Peter, who was also the first of the apostles to preach the good news publicly on what's called the day of Pentecost. It was Peter who, by God's grace, was the first to see 3,000 skeptics become new converts as the Holy Spirit used his words to change their lives. So I don't know about you, but I want to know what this guy has to say. I want to hear, not just with my ears, but with my heart, what the Spirit of God would say to me and to you through him. I wonder why Peter sat down to write. It had been 30 years since Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave and ascended to the right hand of the Father. During those 30 years, things had gone from bad to worse. By this point, Christians have been driven out of the Holy Land as the gospel has begun to spread around the northern rim of the Mediterranean. But now incredible persecution has crushed Peter's fellow Christians. Nero has unleashed unimaginable horror on the Christ followers of Rome. And there is pain and suffering for everyone who dares to name the name of Christ in that entire region. So Peter, seeing the crisis of faith that's being caused by this pain and this suffering, knows he has to write something. He has to write what the Spirit of God has placed within him. So moved by the, by the power of the Spirit, he calls for his friend, a scribe, a guy named Silas or Silvanus, to transcribe what he has to say, the truths that are burning like a fire in his bones. And in the process, God uses Peter to write a letter to speak to women and men in every time and every place where we're discouraged, frustrated, confused, troubled. All the times of famine, how many have there been since the writing of the New Testament? Times of war, over and over and over. Times when Christians were opposed and persecuted, as they still are in many parts of the world. Times of discomfort and disorientation, like the plagues of the past, or the Spanish influenza of 1918, or COVID-19. In moments like this, we need to hear from God. We need to hear what Peter is inspired to write. In Jesus Christ, we have a living hope. Hope has a name. And the name is Jesus. Humans can live for 40 days without food, four days without water, four minutes without air, but not more than four seconds without hope. So together, 
Let's read and learn about our living hope. So what does Peter have to teach us about our living hope? Well, first of all, he points out that though we may not be physically together, we are still spiritually united. Well, that's a good word for us, isn't it? God has always had a people. Not random people here and there, a community of faith, a company of the committed, a band of brothers and sisters loyal to Jesus and to one another. And we may or may not be able to be physically present with each other. In fact, the truth is that the people of God, the community of Christ, speaks every language, lives in every nation, expresses God's creative genius in every variety of skin tone and ethnic identity. In Jesus Christ, our living hope, we, though many, are one. Peter points that out by describing the geographical locations of his readers. Through the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, all areas of what we now call Turkey, then Asia Minor. In every one of those areas, people, though they're spread apart, and in some of those cases may have been virtually alone, are still included in God's people. We need that when times are tough. He tells them God the Father knows all about you. God the Holy Spirit is with you. The blood of Jesus Christ is over you. He gives them a Trinitarian blessing and calms their hearts and says, though you might be a part in Christ, you are one. God the Father knows all about you. God the Holy Spirit is at work in you. The sacrifice of Christ on the cross is applied to you. We are blessed to belong to the body of Christ. I've been to Wuhan, China, where the COVID-19 crisis started, and I know there's incredible Christians there. I know there are some in Amman, Jordan, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Spokane, Washington, Southern Michigan, and now here in Western New York, I've seen it with my own eyes. And last week we celebrated the fact that we're partnered up with some in, in Zige, Rwanda. If you know Jesus, you're not alone. You are not forgotten. You are not abandoned. We are one in him. The second thing Peter teaches us about a living hope is that it does not depend on our circumstances. It centers in a person. Jesus is our living hope. You know, our hope never was in nice buildings or in talented worship teams or teaching pastors or great youth programs or kids ministries. As wonderful as they all are, they support our faith. They don't define it. The current COVID-19 crisis is kind of like a course correction, an attitude check. I mean, the sanctuary's gone. Our proximity to other believers is gone. Our church-based programs are gone. <laughs> but our hope is not gone. Listen to what Peter wrote. So be truly glad. There is a wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than gold. So, when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. I mean, how cool is that, right? I mean, it's hard. It's painful. I don't like it. I don't want it. But if I do it, with my faith solid in Jesus, and we get through this together, the end result is praise and honor and glory in the presence of Christ. Then he goes on and says, you love Jesus even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him, and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible hope. 
Over and over, Peter reminds us, don't focus only on the hardship. Don't obsess about your problem or your pain or your struggle. It's real. Grief and trials truly are difficult, but they are not the end of the story. What did Jesus say? In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the bedrock of our faith, and COVID-19 doesn't change that. He says, you haven't seen Jesus, but you love him. You don't see him now, but you believe in him. I think that is so cool. You know, Peter, Peter saw Jesus, right? I mean, he touched Jesus. Remember, Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up out of the water when he started to sink. And so his faith was partially based on a physical expression of being with Jesus. And then he writes to us and he says, you guys haven't seen him. I mean, for the last 2,000 years, how many people didn't see Jesus but still love him? That would be me. My prayer is that that's you. And he says, now we get to live like it, right? Now we get to live like it. Now we get to live as if what we have always said we believed is really true. Because it is. And in Jesus Christ, we put one foot in front of the other. We take one day's trials as enough for one day. And we walk with him. And we trust in him. And we follow him. Even though we don't get to see him. But one day we will. The truth is that God has a, a larger purpose and a grander plan that he is unfolding even in this hard time. And he is using this ministry that he has given us in this congregation and other churches around the world to actually extend the gospel. COVID-19 is helping Pierce Church to reach more people through the internet than we have reached in a very long time, maybe ever. And he's giving us a chance to demonstrate God's love in practical ways. God is at work. He is at work in us and through us and around us and beyond us. Our God is present. He is with us. He is our living hope. And then in the last part of this first chapter, Peter introduces two huge subjects, two aspects of the Christian life that will carry us through hard times. He tells us to live holy and to live with love. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he, called, he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. You know, holiness is not trying harder and jumping higher. I used to think that, not anymore. It is all about trusting more. Holiness is not right religious thinking. It's not having more Christian information. Holiness is living my life day by day so connected to Jesus that I don't want to do anything to stain his name or to strain our relationship. You know, there's a whole lot about COVID-19 and the stresses we're under that could lead us to do some stupid and destructive things. I mean, think about it. Porn is just a click away. Mind-numbing, mood-altering drugs are increasingly legal and available. <laughs> Liquor stores have been declared essential business, and business is booming. And sadly, domestic abuse is showing a dramatic increase. Why? Because we're stressed out. You know, people who work with addictions say that we are all most vulnerable when we are H-A-L-T, halt, 
hurting, angry, lonely, tired. How many of those are, are you in? Like, I think I got all of them going on at once. Hurting, angry, lonely, tired means you're vulnerable. So if you want to live holy, you don't just think nice thoughts. You do the right thing, right? You make sure you're connected with people you love and who love you. You make sure that your inner life, your connection to God is strong. You don't just do the typical North American Christian thing of showing up at church, you know, on the weekend, dress up, get up, suck it up, and show up. <laughs> now what, right? No, now, now we get to live a real world faith. Faith with everyday prayers and everyday scriptures and everyday praises and everyday decisions to live a holy life. I'm here by myself in a house just across the street from the church. And I am determined to live a holy life. So the first week Nancy was gone, I connected with a Christian counselor online. And there's two or three of them that I Facebook with all the time. Then a couple of days later, I made a list of three special friends that I haven't been in touch with as much as I should have or could have. And I reached out to them and they reached back. About the same time, I made a commitment to FaceTime regularly with my kids and grandkids. That's been a blast. And Nancy and I have a twice a day habit, morning and night, FaceTime together. This isn't about what a good boy I am. It's about carving out a spiritually healthy, emotionally stable, God-honoring walk with him in the spring of 2020. You need to do it too, whatever it takes. And then I love the fact that Peter says, not only be holy, not, you know, don't only guard your soul against the negative, but live in love. Love one another deeply. <laughs> love the people that God has placed in your life. Call them, write them, support them, offer encouragement to them, serve one another, find somebody in need and reach out a hand of love and grace to them. We don't have to love. <laughs> we get to love. So friends, here we go. Life with a living hope. We're a bunch of radical, faith-filled dealers in hope. Coronavirus is highly contagious, but I'm praying that God will raise up Christ followers who are even more contagious with love and grace and goodness and hope. The Lord is helping us, and he will help us from here on out. You know what I think? By the grace of God and with his help, hope rises. Hear this passage of scripture from Psalm 34. I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. 
our gracious God and our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for who you are and what you're like. Your love has touched our lives in so many different ways. You are the God who formed us, the God who knows us, the God who loves us, the God who keeps us, who leads us, who feeds us. You are the God who blesses us, the beginning and end of all that we are or ever hope to be. You are worthy of our praise. We thank you for the work of the Spirit in our lives, for when we are with you, when we are in your presence, we find peace, we find hope, we find strength. In your presence, we're able to put aside the uncertainties of this world for the certainties of your kingdom that never fails. Your promises are not changeable. You give us hope to look beyond the present. Lord, we ask your blessing to be with those today who are lonely and who are struggling with fear. None of us ever imagined something like this. Allow us to feel your presence, to remind us that you are the one who leads us beside the still waters. You help us find rest in green pastures. You bring a calmness to our hearts when challenges come. Lord, we ask your blessing to be with those who are struggling with this time of isolation, that feel as though they're overwhelmed by circumstances. Grant them and us all the renewing hope of your presence. Thank you again for your promises. Lord, we pray for those who are wondering whether they can take another step, whether they're at the end of the rope, that you would uh, reveal yourself in a strong and mighty way among them. Help those who have been infected by this virus. Not only are they afraid of what the symptoms might develop, but they're concerned about those they might have infected before they knew they were sick. Lord, bring healing to their spirits and to their body today. Help us all to reflect your love and bring glory to you in all that we say and do. Sensitize us to the needs around us. Help us to respond as we're able to the scarcity uh, present in people's lives. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I want to take a moment to thank you for your generous financial support of God's work through this church. Um, your faithful giving has been a, a source of real encouragement to us during a challenging time. Since our services are all online, uh, we encourage you to use one of the following methods. You can send your giving by text. Uh, you can use the online giving platform that we've just rolled out. Uh, you can mail in your offering or drop it in the new drop box by the cafe entrance. But whatever you do, thank the Lord for what he's doing in us and through us and beyond us. Uh, your contributions are making that possible. So thank you. When we honor God, he honors us.
So Peter says, it's our turn. We, we get to live out the living hope that Christ gives us. And when we do, by the grace of God, we love in hope, we act in hope, we serve others with hope, we endure a tough time with hope. And when we do, with God's help and by his grace, hope rises. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are our living hope. You know exactly what we're going through. You know this moment in each of our lives, and we invite you into the very center of it. Lord, if there's anybody uh, watching right now that doesn't really know you, may they open their heart and life to you. Become our leader and our forgiver, Lord. Forgive our sins and change our lives. And for those of us who know you and love you, may we keep you at the center every moment of every day as you keep us in your care. Thank you that Jesus is our living hope. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us at Pierce Church today. We're online here every day of the week, so check back for new content. The Lord go with us all.